Hey, what is up guys, Matt here and in this video I decided to show you a tutorial on how to prepare a topical finasteride solution with stemoxidine in a concentration that has been clinically tested and has been shown to minimally affect your systemic DHT. So let's start with the video. This video has been brought to you by GoFiber. Enter your pictures and win a one year supply of GoFiber. It's easy to enter. Order a free sample, take a clear before and after pictures and send them to selfie at gofiber.com. Hey, welcome back everybody, Matt here. You're watching my hair loss and hair transplant related channel where it's all about stopping our hair loss, getting our hair back and hair transplant. In this video, uh, we're starting right away with topical finasteride, okay? Topical finasteride is one of the pretty viable methods uh, how to fight against the male pattern hair loss and simply because it comes from finasteride which is already uh, FDA approved for fighting hair loss. We know what is the mechanism of action behind finasteride. It's blocking the 5-alpha reduction of testosterone into the more potent DHT which is then miniaturizing the hair follicle. So we assume that uh, topical finasteride will work on the same pathway. It's not going to uh, prevent your hair loss in any other way compared to oral finasteride. However, it's applied topically and uh, there was this assumption that it doesn't come with any systemic side effects uh, or any systemic um, uh, DHT suppression whatsoever, which is not true. And it has been already found out in clinical studies. This study came out in 2016 where they compared different uh, concentrations of topical finasteride and pretty much they found out that even very, very uh, low concentrations like 0.025% of topical finasteride which is an equivalent of 0.25 milligram oral finasteride will also come with some systemic DHT suppression namely 24%. And that's the concentration I'm going to be, uh, we're going to be preparing in this video. This concentration, I chose it because it has been clinically studied. We know what this concentration of uh, topical finasteride is capable of doing in terms of inhibiting DHT systemically and uh, inhibiting the DHT on the scalp. I found out this is the best concentration uh, when you minimize the side effects or minimize the systemic DHT in inhibition while maximizing the scalp DHT. DHT suppression. That's what we want because otherwise uh, you may as well uh, take oral finasteride. 0.1%, 0.2%, 0.25%. These are pretty strong concentrations in my opinion and they're not necessary uh, if your goal is to minimize the side effects from finasteride. I mean they're going to be effective but they're also going to be effective in uh, uh, blocking your DHT systemically. And I made already a couple of videos on this topic. You can check out my topical finasteride series on my channel. Um, I'm going to link it somewhere here or in the description below as well. So we are going to be using Essengen F. This is a um, commercially available topical finasteride uh, solution you can buy online uh, from Minoxidil Max. Okay, I tested it out already uh, myself. It's a bit oily, but if you mix it with stemoxidine, it's uh, much better because stemoxidine is not oily at all. It's um, a hydroalcoholic solution. And if I was just using this one, it was pretty oily. Okay, uh, this is a 60 milliliter solution, which is normally a four month supply. This, uh, however, for in our case, uh, can last you like more than one year. Okay, so you only need one bottle. You can buy it on the link in the description below again. Uh, you also support my channel with that. I get a commission uh, for each sale. It's like 15%, I guess. So if you buy it, uh, thank you very much. You're supporting my channel and uh, help me improve the quality of my videos that way. So this, buy it once, you have it for more than 12 months. I'm going to explain you why. <clears throat> Alright guys, before I start with the demonstration, let me give you a short introduction to uh, stemoxidine. Maybe some of you guys don't know it yet. Well, stemoxidine, 5%. Uh, you can buy it, by the way, from different brands like Cerioxyl or Radcan. But the first brand that uh, started uh, developing this formula was actually L'Oreal. And they also made a study on that. And I'm not going to go too much into that. Uh, long story short, uh, the mechanism of action of uh, stemoxidine is basically basically 
that it shortens the kinogen phase. And some of you guys may not know the kinogen phase either. Well, as there is a transition phase, catagen phase between the anagen and telogen phase where the hair is, you know, growing and then it starts falling out. There is also a another transition type of phase between the telogen phase after the hair already has fell out and then it wants to start growing. Well, there is another transition phase, kinogen phase. Kinogen means empty where the hair follicle slot, if you will, basically the slot that it's kind of uh, surrounded by the papillary layer, it's empty and there is no hair follicle and it can be empty for a couple months. Um, there, They made a study on uh, balding and non-balding men uh, and measured their kinogen phases over 14 years and they figured that the slot can be empty for three to seven months sometimes before the new anagen phase kicks in by the hair follicle. Also, not each hair follicle that kind of as a result of telogen phase has fallen out will have to go through the kinogen phase. Sometimes it happens only by a certain percentage of the hair follicles that they will kind of uh, suffer from the kinogen phase before they actually uh, will be active again and start growing uh, within the anagen phase. Long story short, the shorter your kinogen phase is overall on all of your hair follicles on the scalp, the more you, the more of the hair you will have at any given time. So it's good to use it as a solvent. It's a hydroalcoholic solution. It doesn't contain any propylene glycol, which sometimes tends to be like uh, most irritative agent, uh, especially you guys who have used minoxidil, maybe found out that propylene glycol what it was exactly the ingredient that tend to irritate and dry out your scalp. It doesn't contain it. It only has alcohol, purified water, and some other ingredients. I'm not gonna uh, talk uh, a lot about in this video, at least. Okay, so we're gonna be. And smells good, by the way. It smells like a fresh, like a fresh tea to me. I don't know. I like it. Anyways, we're gonna be mixing 0.2% topical finasteride solution from Minoxidil Max called Essengen F with Stemoxidine 5% and we'll be making it a topical finasteride 0.025% solution. How? Let's watch. We're gonna be using 3.75 milliliters of this solution. Why only 3.75 milliliter of topical finasteride? Well, if you divide 3.75 by 30, we'll get 0 0.125. Now, 0 0.125 milliliter of this solution contains exactly an equivalent of 0 0.25 milligram of oral finasteride uh, per one application, per one milliliter of liquid. That means if you make a one month solution out of that in each daily application, there will be an equivalent of 0 0.25 milligram of oral finasteride, which has uh, ability to suppress your DHT by only 22 or 20, sorry, 24% and inhibit the scalp DHT by about 52%, which is pretty good. Good. How much semoxidine you will use, it's really up to you. First, you need to find out how much liquid do you require if you want to like sufficiently cover all of your balding areas with topical finasteride. Is it one milliliter? Is it two? Is it three milliliter? I don't know how big your head is, how much bald baldness you have. Are you diffuse thinner? Then you probably need more. Now, I optimized for two milliliters uh, with this tutorial because I use two milliliters normally just on my crown and mid scalp. This hair is already transplanted, so I only use it here. But I'm a diffuse thinner, so I need need to use it like two milliliters of solution. So for 3.75 milliliters of topical finasteride Essengen F, we'll be adding altogether 60 milliliters of stemoxidine. That way I can use two milliliters of stemoxidine with 0 0.125 milliliters of topical finasteride 0.2% every day. And that will make it 2.125 milliliters of daily dose of topical finasteride, which has only 0.025% concentration. I hope you understand. Now, as you can see here, uh, my scale doesn't allow me to weigh more than uh, 50 milliliters of liquid at once. So I need to weigh uh, stemoxidine like 30 milliliters and then again 30 milliliters to make it like 60 milliliters. Uh, I also uh, encourage you to buy a scale if you don't have at home 
it's a digital scale from Amazon for like 10 bucks. There are going to be some useful links in the description below for uh, stemoxidine, for uh, the scale and for the topical uh, solution itself. So you may want to check them out. That's how you mix it together. Then you shake it well and you can pretty much use it already. Again, this concentration has been shown to be the most I would say side effect friendly because it only uh, blocks DHT systemically in, tw in about 24% while having a nice uh, DHT suppression of 52% on the scalp, which is almost comparable to the oral finasteride, which has the ability to uh, block scalp DHT in about 70%. Uh, Seventy-five percent depends on which studies are we uh, we are looking at. Okay, I'm not here to convince you to take oral finasteride because uh, it's not the point of this video. I'm using oral finasteride. Yes, it does block my systemic DHT probably more than this solution here, uh, but uh, it's fine for me. I take the risk, I decided to take it, but I'm not here to convince you to take oral finasteride if you don't want. This video is clearly just to show you how you can minimize the side effects of topical finasteride uh, by mixing it with uh, some solvent like stemoxidine. Because clearly, if you use this solution uh, as they advise you uh, by using 0.5 milliliter per day, that's first not enough for diffuse thinners. You will have to mix it with some solvent anyways, because if you wanna cover like a large balding area, the 0.5 milliliter won't be enough. And on the other, like additionally to that, per 0.5 milliliter of this solution, you have one milligram of oral finasteride equivalent. So you may as well take oral finasteride already because you're not minimizing the uh, the effects of uh, topical finasteride on the systemic DHT as much if you are using uh, higher concentrations. All right, guys, that was it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you found it informative. In case I forgot anything or in case you have any more questions, make sure you comment below. And for all you guys who have been already managing uh, the hair loss, your hair loss is stable, but maybe you have some receding areas on the scalp that cannot be treated like any more with any treatment because nothing is helping helping they're too bald uh, or you started with a treatment too late and you cannot really regrow any hair in that particular area the hair transplant is usually the last option the last viable option which can really help and restore the hair almost in a way that it used to be and it looks also really natural now it doesn't always look natural only if you get the hair transplant the right way you know if you find a good doctor if you get a proper quality guidance and if you get like really good results like many of my clients now it's possible to sign up for a hair transplant strategy session with me it's a 60 minute call where i basically explain you all you need to know before your hair transplant also help you find uh, hair transplant doctors who are reliable worldwide and help you with your hair transplant research, help you get the best result at the end of the day. That's my service that I provide to you, possible to sign up on mattdominance.com slash mentoring. And also if you are uh, entirely new to my channel, hey, welcome, first of all, and also check out my free ebook, Five Things I Wished I Had Known Before My Hair Transplant, which can also already help you make your feet wet uh, in the hair transplant research, what's important to look for, what's not important to look for, okay? So these are the things that I can offer you at the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.